Last weekend, like every other weekend since October the 7th, London streets were filled with people chanting for jihad, a free Palestine, and from the river to the sea, a call for the eradication of Israel as a nation state. In one banner, the protesters called for it by any means necessary. Effectively, as some critics have noted, a call for genocide of the people of Israel. These protests began the very same weekend that Hamas butchered and tortured thousands of people at the behest of their Iranian paymasters, taking hundreds of innocent men, women and children hostage. Over 130 of them, including a baby, are still being held beneath the streets of Gaza in a labyrinth of dark tunnels hundreds of feet deep, with reports that more of them have died just tonight. Every weekend since October the 7th, the police have been at pains to point out why they haven't arrested more people, how they have allowed anti-Semitic behaviour on the march, Hamas posters, ISIS flags and intimidation. Jewish people on the streets of London are in fear sometimes of their lives. Last week, it seemed the Met had finally seen sense. On the announcement of yet another march planned for Saturday from Maribyrn to Whitehall, the police stated that the march would not be allowed to enter Whitehall or get too close to Downing Street. They argued that the good people of London had put up with enough marches, enough disruption, and it was time they made a stand. But, of course, come Saturday, the marchers did exactly as they wanted. They didn't stop until they got all the way down Whitehall. And, as usual, the protesters clambered all over war memorials and statues, disrespecting the memory of the war dead. They don't care for our war dead, of course. Why would they? So now the government have had to get involved. Only this week, Home Secretary James Cleverley announced a ban on climbing on war memorials with the punishment of a £1,000 fine and even jail. The lefties, of course, have immediately cried foul. It's a terrible infringement of human rights, they say. We should all have the right to protest. Well, not every bloody week you don't. And I'm sorry, I'm with the Home Secretary on this. They should just stop doing it. Come to think of it, they should stop marching altogether. They never call for the release of the hostages. They have no time for anyone who disagrees with them. And they are frequently involved in intimidatory behaviour. Ordinary Londoners have had enough. Only last night, a group of Islamists forced the theatre to reject an event that had been planned for months by our very own Douglas Murray, simply because they didn't agree with what might have been said at the event. They chanted, they ranted and they rallied outside the central London theatre, even after the event had been moved somewhere else. It's absolutely ridiculous and out of hand now. It's time to call a halt to this distinctly un-British behaviour.